Uh, back in 1951, a studio to put out a science fiction film, a major one such as Fox, was uh, very rare because it was basically uh, a, a genre that was produced by all the uh, smaller studios at that time. So this was a big A-class production and they did a beautiful job with the artwork on the poster, promoting it as uh, it should have been a, a terrific, exciting film. It shows uh, Gort and Michael Rennie and Patricia Neal and ray guns and flying saucers and uh, anything else that you'd care to want to see in a science fiction film at that time. This is a one sheet. It's a 27 by 41 inches. It's the most common poster used in uh, promoting a movie at a movie theater. The best thing about this poster, it's got the graphics of a B film, which needed good graphics to sell a cheap movie. But it's an A movie, so to combine uh, great graphics with an A film makes it the most desirable poster to have. That's a 22 by 28, also known as a half sheet. Um, usually movies had two style posters, an A and a B, but Fox only chose to do a, a one style poster. So there's only one style of this particular size. It's funny how these posters, they switch off between Patricia Neal and a blonde girl. This is an insert, or 14 by 36. Again, it was uh, used in movie theaters to promote the film. It just depended on what size frame the theater had. Some had one sheet frames, some had insert frames. It depended on how big or small the theater was. Usually they did two styles of artwork for a film. The one sheet, uh, the half sheet, the six sheet, and the title card were all the same. Only the insert and the three sheet were different and they were usually the same artwork. It was typical for Fox to put two black and white photos at the bottom of their inserts. This time it's got Patricia Neal pictured. Uh, I don't remember her in a uh, fancy cocktail dress, but it's what sells movies. This is the title card to a lobby set. Lobby cards are 11 by 14. They always consist of seven photos and a title card. Uh, sometimes the studio won't have a title card. They'll have eight photos but uh, Fox did title cards. These were used, of course, in the movie theaters. Uh, on the walls, they would uh, put these up like stills and um, just advertise the uh, showing of the film. In collecting these lobby cards, it's always easy, of course, to buy them as a set. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. It happened in this case. I had to buy uh, different cards from different uh, dealers and sometimes I would end up with seven cards and they needed that last card and you couldn't find it and then when you do find it it's a picture like this like one of the best shots and you go oh now I know why I can't find it because they break up the uh, sets and they sell all the good cards off and they keep all the bad ones. This card number seven you can see the air holes underneath uh, Gort's uh, chin there. That's card number eight, the last card of the uh, lobby set. This is a window card. It's 14 by 22 inches. The white on the top is for the theater imprint. In other words, the th movie theater would get this poster, would get several of them, and put their name on the white part and what time and what day the movie was being shown. They then hand these out to local stores in the neighborhood and I guess for exchange for a few passes would uh, display these in windows of the stores to let uh, customers know when the uh, movie was uh, playing and where it was playing, uh, hence the name uh, Window Card. This is a theater lobby standee. They didn't make them for all movies, only their A titles when they were having good feelings that this was going to be a big film for them. They would uh, produce oh, only a handful of these uh, lobby standees. They're full size, about four feet high, corrugated cardboard. It's like one of the rarest pieces I own. This is a 24 by 82 inch banner. It was generally uh, hung from the theater marquee. They would have, let's say, a wooden sign that would hang under the marquee that would say air conditioned. They would take this banner and just cover that over and then hang it from the marquee so when you walk down the sidewalk it would be hanging right overhead. This is a uh, counter display. It's mentioned in the press book. It's even shown in the press book. And it was used similar to the window card, except the store would put it on the counter. 
This was a promotional giveaway. It's a uh, Gort's mask with the movie's uh, logo on his the, uh, visor on the helmet. And uh, the eyes uh, punch out so you could see through and there's little string holes in the ears so you could put string through it and wear it around your face. And generally it was given out to the kids who came to see the Saturday matinee uh, showing of the movie. And they would hand them out and sometimes they would take photographs of all the kids wearing them and put them in the local paper to really promote the movie and get everybody to go see it. This is similar in use to the window card. It's uh, what they call a bumper card. It looks like a bumper sticker, but it's cardboard, and it was just propped up against a counter or thrown into a window and just uh, advertised the film. Now this is the miniature of the flying saucer used in Day the Earth Stood Still. It's seven feet across. It's made of fiberglass. Makes a good drum. And it was used in two scenes that I know of in the film. One was a perspective shot where Klaatu's walking down the ramp of the ship at the very beginning. They only had half of the ship built full size, and they wanted to get a little further around to show more of the size of the ship. So they did a hanging miniature, is what it's called. This was in the foreground, and Klaatu was back probably hundreds of yards away to match this, and it really matched in the film, you can't tell. This also was used in the very end of the film, where the ship is taking off, leaving, and you see it as it lifts up and goes out of the frame. This was the model. The reason this model is so big is the ASA of the film was very, very small in those days. The bigger the set, the bigger the model, the easier it was to shoot. Now this model, later on, was used in a Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea show, and they used to recycle their props a lot. Now they altered the bottom. This bottom was flat originally from the original film. They altered the bottom of this, putting rings of lights in it, and had it go under the sea with the sea view in the thing. It's supposed to be an outer spacecraft. Now to show you the influence that this film has had on collectors and just fans in general is the many, many models and uh, sculptures and things that people have done over the years uh, off of Day the Earth Sit Still. And uh, here's an example of Gort the, the robot. Uh, that a friend of mine, Steve Neal, made up for me a few years ago, and it's a light box is what it actually is, but he handmade that. That is a handmade thing. Uh, strictly for me, it's a one-of-a-kind item. The rather squat uh, gort on the left-hand side was made by a company called Kyoto, which is a big plastic kit company in Japan, and they made a lot of these different, like, little dwarf guys, they call them. They're really kind of cute little guys. And next to him, we have one that a friend of mine in Japan built for me, uh, that's built over a toy soldier. He just sculpted what over it. I don't know what he sculpted it on, but it's pretty neat looking though. And the one to the far right is a very small little lead figure of Gort made in around, it was 1984, I believe. And that was a little one that they put out for a while in very short uh, limited runs. But you can see that Gort the robot was very, very big in Japan as well. This uh, Gort and Klaatu is from a company called Billiken. They're in Japan and they make these excellent vinyl kits and this is a brand new kit for 1995 and it's absolutely perfect. A fellow named Mr. Hama actually sculpted these and they're just about as perfect. It looks like you took Gort and Klaatu and shrunk them down. I mean they're just that good. Every detail is there and they're just wonderful. I'm standing in front of uh, Gort, uh, the fiberglass statue of Gort from Day the Earth Stood Still. This was used it, primarily in scenes where the robot was firing on the tanks and his visor went raised up and down. It was also used in a couple other shots. I purchased this in about 1978 from Larry Harmon, who was Bozo the Clown. He bought it originally in 1953 from 20th Century Fox uh, and purchased it to use on a Saturday morning kids show. Um, when I got it, it had uh, uh, fins on it and a little speaker here and so forth, and I restored it and put it back to its original shape. Day the Earth Stood Still was a very important film to me. Uh, I first saw it when I was a little kid, and I was, I was so small I couldn't even understand what the movie was about. It was just a big iron guy walking around. But then 